Hi everybody, welcome back. This is part two of chapter 10, Gases. This is Dr. Rhonda Cofield with Calhoun Community College. And in part two, we are going to start looking at the general gas laws or the simple gas laws, a lot of people call them. And so in this part, we're gonna look at the first one, which is Boyle's Law. So there are four basic properties of a gas. You have its pressure, how much volume it's in, what temperature it's at, and then how much you have of it or how many moles you have. And so pressure we say is P, volume, it's, and these are capitals, V, and temperature is T. Please note, temperature is always gonna be in Kelvin. So anytime you work a gas problem, you must make sure that you convert it to Kelvin, okay? And if you don't know, Celsius plus 273 is going to give you your Kelvin temperature. And then the amount is going to be the amount in moles, which is, is the same as grams per mole, right? So grams per mole, what does that mean? So if I need to know how many moles is in something and I have grams, I have this right here. And I find that in your periodic table. So the periodic table will have some numbers with decimals, okay, like 4.022, okay. That number in one of those little blocks is tells you how many grams there are in one mole of a substance. So when we're looking at um, amounts, it's hard to measure a mole. We usually measure in grams. So just remember that we're, when we're looking at moles, if it gives you grams, you're going to be thinking in moles and how to get it to that. Okay? So we've got pressure, volume, temperature, and the number of moles of the gas or how much gas we have. These are related to each other. So if I change one of them, the other things are going to change. The simple gas laws describe the relationship between these different properties, okay? And so typically what we do is we look at two properties and then we keep the other two things constant so we can just isolate them and look at the effect that they have on each other. So the simple gas laws are Boyle's Law, which we're going to look at in this part, and that is the relationship between pressure and volume. There's Charles' law, which is going to look at volume and temperature. And then Avogadro's law, which is going to look at volume and the number of moles. And so we're looking at those as they compare to each other. And if I, do, if I raise one, what happens to the other one? Does it go up or does it go down? So Boyle's law states that the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to the pressure. What's that mean in English? Well, that means if I increase the volume, I decrease the pressure. Okay, and the opposite is also true. If I decrease the volume, I increase the pressure. All right, and you can even turn it around and say if I increase the pressure, it decreases the volume. See how that is? So that's an inverse relationship. When I do one thing to the other, one thing to one um, volume or whatever, it's going to do the opposite effect on the other, and it's going to do it the same amount. So my picture here shows that I have one cylinder that's got a one liter volume. And so I have a kilogram of force pushing down on this, and so this is where this is staying, okay? And then I, and so I'm saying I've got one atmosphere of pressure on here, okay? That's what this thing is telling me. Then I'm going to put, I'm going to double that weight, okay? So I'm doubling the force, and I'm going to have two kilograms instead of one kilogram. That is going to push this down, and what it will do is it will half the volume. So two times the pressure is going to result in one half the volume. As one goes up, the other goes down. That's Boyle's law. Why is that the case? 
Well, if I decrease the volume, I've got a smaller space for these guys to hit the wall, right? And they're going to collide more often because it's not as far to get there. So that's why you have this inverse proportion. And this is one thing that's in your book that kind of just shows you the same thing. As I um, increase volume, the pressure is lower. So in this, I am increasing pressure and see what's happening to my volume. It's coming down. So the other way of saying that is pressure times volume equals a constant. I have to, if I change one, the other one has to change in order to get them to be equal to that same constant again. All right. Another way of saying that relationship is that if I have a situation where I have a, a pressure and a volume, okay, if I make changes to that, that's got to still be equal to the new pressure times the volume. Because I have to, when I'm changing it, it's going to come back to that constant relationship. We use Boyle's Law a lot in scuba diving. So for every 10 meters of depth, a diver is going to experience about one additional atmosphere of pressure due to the weight of the water. Water weighs a lot more than air, right? So at 20 meters, for example, you're going to be at three atmospheres because you're at one atmosphere here, and then you are two atmospheres after 10 meters, and three atmospheres at 20. So if you hold your breath and go up, the volume of your lungs are going to stay the same, but the pressure is going to increase, or it's going to decrease times 10. What does that mean? Well, if you're holding your breath and trying not to let anything happen, your lungs are going to expand anyway, because as you decrease the pressure, the volume in your lungs is going to increase. And if you hold your breath in there and keep all that air inside, what's going to happen? your lung could actually explode. And so we always say when you're rising from the bottom, you always exhale as you go up, okay? Because as pressure decreases, when you're going up, your volume will increase and bad things can happen, right? And that's happening also in your bloodstream. Okay, so as you breathe, you inhale by increasing your lung volume. A woman has an initial volume of 2.75 liters. So that's a volume, and it says initial. Now, you can say VI or, and VF for initial and final. I usually just do one and two. So that's, I'm going to say that's my V1, and it's filled with air at an atmospheric pressure of 1.02 atmospheres. So I've got 2.75 liters and 1.02 atmospheres because you want to make sure you're getting these things the right way. Then I'm going to change my situation. And now it's saying if she increases her lung volume to 3.25 liters without taking any more air in, what will be the new pressure in her lungs? So we know that this is inversely proportional, right? So what we're going to, and, and we remember mathematically we said that P1 times V1 has got to equal to P2 times V2. Because whatever I do to that volume, my pressure has to change to make sure that these are still equal to each other. I'm going to check my inventory over here. And I'm going to make sure that I'm in the same units, okay? And, I, and, and I've got liters, and then it's atmosphere, and it doesn't actually tell, ask me or specify what it wants, okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to leave it in atmosphere because that's easiest. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say P1 is 1.02 atmospheres. And V1 is 2.75 liters. And that's going to be equal to, I don't know what P2 is, but I do know that V2 
is 3.25 liters. All right, so this is where our algebra is going to come in. If I want to get, and I'm not going to do this every time, but I'll do it at the beginning, okay? To get rid of the 3.25 liters on this side, I divide both sides by that, right? Which gets rid of that one. So then P2 is equal to 1.02 atmospheres times 2.75 liters divided by 3.25 liters, okay? Liters will cancel, and that makes me joyous because that means that I'm going to have atmospheres as my unit. And when I put that into my handy-dandy calculator, I get 0 0.863 atmospheres. Now, you might get a little bit different in this last one. That's okay, because that's your, that's your un, kind of unknown, you're guessing. That's fine, okay? It's, it depends on how you round things, but never round until the end, remember. And so 0 0.863 atmospheres is what you should get when you put that in your calculator. And again, make sure that you're putting it in correctly, that you equal these two together before you divide. Otherwise, it can mess you up, right? So that's Boyle's Law. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So as one goes up, the other goes down. So I increased the pressure from 2.75 to 3.25. So I would expect my pressure to be lower than 1.02, and it is. So that's kind of like my little mental check. All right, I've given you some practice problems to do, and that is Boyle's Law.